Welcome back to the next year of Avuzastel in the realm of Amikamo. It is now the first day of the year 252. The population is 43. And I think one of the first things we need to do is expand our meeting hall. This place is getting crowded in here and there's only one table. They need some chairs and stuff. The Baroness Zephy Kamoshreg still needs a tomb, so we need to build that for her too. Incidentally, I never mentioned this, but the Baroness's husband is Grumpy Dwarf that I mentioned last time, so <laughs> she's married to Grumpy. Oh, and her older brother is Fath Logimimsal, who was depressed in the last episode. Huh, interesting. With the threat of goblin attacks hanging over us, I've expanded the Subtle Keys squad up to eight people. Most of these are completely unexperienced, but uh, hopefully they will do some training and get better at it. Likewise, I've added two more to the Fenced Amazements Marks Dwarf squad so they can start training on their crossbow skills. Oh, this is, this is interesting. This just popped up. Um, an elf, the Baroness is meeting with an elf diplomat named Amima Amaz. Amima Amizo, that's what it is. You have disrespected the trees in this area, but this is what we have come to expect from your stunted kind. Further abuse cannot be tolerated. Let this be a warning to you. Speaking of the elves, an elven caravan from Fawitha Lithu has arrived. Oh, they're just walking down the stairs with their horses. That's interesting. That's a neat trick. You know, for a people who hates it when we cut down trees, they sure do have a lot of wooden items for sale. Well, once again, they don't have a whole lot except nuts and fruit and a bunch of splints and crutches and some musical instrument pieces. Ah, oh, wonderful. Thank you for your business. I brought a lot of goods down to the trade depot for nothing there. Uh-oh, Fath Logemonsal is stumbling around obliviously. He's just walking around up on the surface. This is the Baroness's older brother, apparently. This would be really bad if he went uh, off the deep end. I'm going to do some stuff to improve poor Fath's bedroom. Maybe that will help his mood. And it looks like the first migrants of the year have arrived. Who cares what they think? Everything is so much easier when you just tell the truth. It's best to just slow down and relax. I'm at my best under pressure. I'm concentrating on something. Be merry. Society flourishes when lawbreakers are punished. All of that so-called knowledge doesn't mean a thing. Is there ever a time when honesty by itself overrides other considerations? Say what is right, not what is true. I've been preying on the concept of minerals. We should all be so lucky as to truly master a skill. I just don't understand these flames of passion people go on about. I don't understand how somebody can become so obsessed by what somebody else has. We should all be as one. Why all the struggling? Try to focus on the practical side of the matter. I need some excitement in my life. I wouldn't feel comfortable getting all dressed up. How can society function without loyalty? 
we must be able to have faith in each other. Well, that was quite a large migration of people into my fortress. Twenty-five new dwarves in all, bringing our total population up to 68 now, and, and graduating us to a village. Irva Rithasol has withdrawn from society to make an artifact, I assume. Ah, oh, the buzzards are back again. And the elves are leaving. And Irva Rithasol has created Ikumstin, a slate grate. She claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Dukim Sacktown. There go the elves for another year. Bye bye, bring back something better next time. After that last goblin attack, I am making a fenced-in pen here for my pasture, making the fence out of slate blocks. And it is now summer in the year 252. That means I think we're going to get a human caravan. And uh, I can't quite remember exactly when the Vile Force of Darkness arrived, but I think it was in autumn. So I think I have a little bit more time. Wow, literally seconds after I was talking about the Vile Force of Darkness arriving in autumn, a Vile Force of Darkness has arrived on the first day of summer. And my pasture is not finished yet. And many of my dwarves are outside. Well, this is quite a pickle. What a way to start the morning here as I'm... I'm playing in the morning now. There they are. They're coming in from the north. Looks like I'm advancing a step at a time here. And looks like more archers. I only see four so far. I am going to station my crossbowmen up here on the ramparts so they can shoot out through these uh, arrow slits. Hopefully. Now there's six goblins now. Oh man. I'm gonna follow the goblins. I think all my dwarves are inside so I'm gonna lock these doors. Back to following the goblins. They are approaching Approaching my new pasture that I haven't finished the wall yet. Heading toward the old pasture. I think they're going to start shooting any second. There they go. They're shooting my animals. Ah, there's a lot of animals out there. That's really irritating. Alright, why aren't my guys shooting at them? I'm assigning my Marks Dwarves to attack these two goblins out here. Let's see if they can hit them. Uh, doesn't look like it. They can't hit him from there. Oh man. What good are these ramparts if I can't shoot down from them? Uh, I just have to watch while these goblins shoot up all my animals. Alright, well I've learned that my, uh, my ramparts are no good. It looks like the siege is over and the goblins are leaving now. After killing the last of my animals. Hunting down this poor mule or whatever it is. I think the donkey survived. And now all the goblins are gone. Well, whoops, no, not quite all the goblins are gone. Nope, now they are gone. There was one left and now he's gone. Well, we survived. Uh, we lost all of our uh, animals again, though. Well, our ramparts were a miserable, dismal failure. Well, a human diplomat has arrived. Twice Adelpick, a lawgiver. 
I wonder what he's here for. He came down to speak to the Baroness. Greetings, noble dwarf. There is much to discuss. It's such a pleasant place you've carved out for yourselves. There is much to share. It has been an honor, noble Zephy Kemeshreg. I bid you farewell. And just behind the ambassador, a human caravan from Mong Kakpoth has arrived. Just on schedule. Don't mind all the bloody carcasses and corpses up on the field up there. Just step over them. Oh, here are the rumors. In the mid-spring of 252, the army of Eleri Trenchpet marched on Water Nightmares. And in the early spring of 252, Eleri Trenchpet became Lord of the Shaken Council, replacing Agil Kindledrake. I am not sure who that is. It looks like Goblin Armies. They're actually marching fairly close to my location here. I'm right here, and the goblins are right there. Well, that could explain why I'm seeing all these vile forces of darkness. I built too close to the goblins. Oh well. Well, here is more information on this attack. The army of Zuglar Rhymepleated marched on... Lunghatch, Lunghatchet. <laughs> These words, man. Um, refugees calling themselves the Poetic League fled. The Band of Evening fled. The Fellowship of Pride fled. So these are a bunch of different groups that have fled from the area just before an army of the strife, strifeful poisons led by the goblin Zal. Crowd soul descended upon Lunghatchet. Well, lots of activity. I guess we can expect some refugees. The year 252 looks like a year of war. The only animals that survived the goblin attack are a lamb and that donkey that was just running all over the map. Oh no! As if the goblins weren't bad enough, the Cyclops, Gorno Olsmozel, Smatspastetso has come. Gorno Olsmozel, Smatspastetso. A giant humanoid monster with a single eye set in its forehead. Wow. This is probably not going to go well. Because he can just rip the doors down. There's a lot of my dwarves very close to this guy. The Cyclops is right up here. He's gonna charge right down here, I bet. Alright, I am sending all squads to attack this Cyclops because he's gonna catch up to my guys and slaughter them. I have no choice here, I don't think. Alright, I'm gonna follow the Cyclops. Oh, he's moving in really fast. Really, really fast. Oh, one guy. They're fighting. They're fighting. Oh, God, he's by himself. He's hurt. He's dead. I think he's dead. One dwarf is dead. A mace dwarf is down. Oh, my guys are fighting him again. Fighting, fighting. They're dodging. They're dodging. He's hurt. The Cyclops is hurt. Is he down? I think he's down. The Cyclops is dead. We, we defeated the Cyclops, but we lost... Two dwarves, I think. I think we lost two in the process. Oh no, we lost one of our founding seven, Shora Anamstikos. The Cyclops bashes her in the head, bruising the skin through the copper helm. The force twists the neck, tearing apart the muscle and tearing apart the upper spine's nervous tissue. Oh, man. I think she might have been the first one out there fighting with him. I think we also lost Muthkat Niladam, the ranger. He's on the list of missing now. Uh, he, uh, he tried to shoot the Cyclops. 
Oh man, the Cyclops punches the ranger in the lower body and knocked him away. Then, then the ranger vomited. <laughs> and then he slammed into an obstacle. He lost his crossbow. He fell over. I've been injured badly. Uh, I cannot just stand by. This might require an answer. Death, the horror. And then I think he died. It looks like the weaponsmith Etan Kogonlerteth was the one who actually killed the Cyclops with his mace. He smashed him in the head and his the Cyclops' head exploded into gore. Death, the horror. Can it all end so quickly? Be gone, fear. Death, this is truly horrifying. Well, at least you, you killed the Cyclops, so you saved the fortress by smashing him in the head. You saved a lot of innocent lives there, so don't feel so bad. Two dead from the Cyclops attack. That was not as bad as I feared it might be. I feared he was going to go on a slaughtering rampage through my entire fortress. But it was not to be. What are all these dwarves doing? I think all these dwarves are out here picking plants. Gathering fruit and so forth. Not sure we still need to do that, but I guess I'll just leave them. It's a nice day for a picnic, I guess. Uh-oh, Fath is throwing a tantrum. What is he doing? Don't attack anyone. Do not attack anyone. Oh, he's fighting. He is fighting. Oh, now he's gone back to bed. Phew. He punched a trapper in the arm and then went to bed. That wasn't very nice, Fath. I know you're the Baroness's brother and all, but I don't know if we can stand for all this, this tantrum activity. You can't be running around punching other dwarves. Meanwhile, the human caravan is just down here waiting for us. Are you guys going to trade with us or what? Oh! We have a mayor, and they've imposed a ban on certain exports. When did we get a mayor? Neil Alenator is the mayor. When did this happen? It happened right before the Cyclops arrived. That's probably why I didn't notice it. He has prohibited the export of shirts, and he's going to have to wait for me to make him a nice room for his mayoral needs because I'm busy right now. All right, I am finally trading with the humans and mm, they want more. All right, fine, you thieving bastards. Take all of my stuff. But I got some cloth and some thread and some weapons and uh, leather, miscellaneous junk. I'm working on the Baroness's tomb and I've crafted a silver statue of her. The item is a finely designed image of Zephy Mischief Gloves the Dwarf and Dwarves in Silver by Uzel Mafalazar. Zephy is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Zephy to the position of Baroness of the Systemic Tool in the midwinter of 251. And we are just going to go set that statue right in her new tomb, carved out of the marble rock layer here, engraved walls, weapon racks, and armor racks. It's a tomb fit for a Baroness, I think. And now some migrants have arrived. No law can do justice to the complexity of life. A skilled warrior is a beautiful sight to behold. Family is the true bond that keeps society thriving. One must always be loyal to their cause and the ones they serve. I was never one to follow advice. And it looks like that's it. A small crowd of migrants this time, but a lot of animals to replenish our pasture. Seven dwarves with two legendary stone crafters. 
that brings our population up to a whopping 75. And the human caravan is leaving now. See you next year. Fath, the Baroness's brother, just punched a stray dog for no apparent reason. Everything is all piling up at once. Fath has been utterly harrowed by the nightmare that is his tragic life. Man, we just cannot help this guy. We have got our new fenced-in pasture ready. So hopefully the goblins will have a little bit of a harder time killing all of our animals next year. And we've laid our first two casualties to rest. Shora Anamstakos, the founder, is resting here. And Muthkat Niladem, the ranger, is here as well. Fath is stumbling around obliviously. I don't know how much longer this guy's gonna last. He's really unhappy. And autumn has arrived. We got through the summer. So you can see here I'm working again on top of my fortification here. I put that floor covering, the hatch, back in the ceiling. I, I hope it works better this time. I'm also going to build fortifications all the way around the perimeter of this place. And maybe that will allow me to shoot down at the goblins next year. A caravan from Adithlor has arrived. And our outpost liaison, Kumal Dumatnikat, has also arrived. Time for the Dwarven Autumn Caravan. Welcome dwarves from the homeland. Once again, I have completely forgotten what I was supposed to export to these dwarves. The export agreements that I will be ignoring next year will include maces and plants, blocks and legwear and tools, and windows. Ah, oh, wonderful. Thank you for your business. We got all kinds of stuff. Weapons and food and seeds and cloth and another round of miscellaneous junk purchased. The summer migrants have arrived. One must always be loyal to their cause and the ones they serve. Just nine migrants in this wave. I said summer migrants earlier, but I meant autumn migrants. The population is now 87, and we have graduated to a town. Well, it's taken some doing, but I finally got the fortifications built around the top of my, well, my short tower. And I got this hatch working properly. It took me no end of, of struggling and trial and error to get this stupid hatch working. I had to build it downstairs on this level, then build the hatch on top of it. Then the dwarves could go up and down through the hatch. Uh-oh, Fath Logemimsal is dehydrated. This is not a good sign. He has been overthrown by the stresses of day-to-day -day living. I think he's not coming back from this. He is running around babbling, it says. He's not eating and drinking. I think he's not long for this world. Well, I hope the Baroness doesn't mind. It'd be nice if he wouldn't die right in the middle of all these other dwarves. Now Fath is starving. It won't be long now. Huh, what is this? The Hillocks of Cloisterhale has been founded nearly a day's travel to the west and looks to your thriving economy for its future prosperity. Huh. What does that mean? I'm not sure they should be looking to us because I'm noticing that we are running very low on drinks. I think I need to increase my production of booze. And there it is. Fath Logemimsal has been found dead from dehydration. His sad, turbulent life is now over. Fath Paintrace is dead! Most shocking! 
the Baroness is shocked at the unexpected death of her brother. It wasn't really unexpected, actually. It was very expected. And winter has arrived here in the year 252. And you can see here that I have just created a tomb for poor Fath, the Baroness's brother. He gets a place of honor resting next to the eventual resting place of the Baroness. Unfortunately, there was also a bunch of uh, malachite here in the walls, so I had to sort of dig that out as well. And it looks like Nil, the mayor, is laying the Baroness's brother to rest. That was nice of him. And he's gone to bed. And now the hillocks of Daggerstone has been found at a half day's travel to the east and looks to your thriving economy for its future prosperity. Ugh, that's two now. Well, here are the two hillocks to the east. This E here. The dwarven hillocks of Daggerstone, population 50. And over to the west, the dwarven hillocks of Cloister Hale, population 50. What do we do with them? Oh man, just when I thought we were getting close to the end of the year and everything was on a nice, even keel, the Etten Moguk Rusnutanono Snunusek Ruspdo has come. <laughs> what a name. A giant humanoid monster with two heads. Well, we're not getting out of this year quite so easily. Now, this Etten is moving fast. I'm stationing my Marks Dwarfs up on the roof. Unfortunately, I think the Etten can climb over these walls. I'm telling my crossbowmen to start shooting. I don't know if it's going to work or not. No, it's not. Okay, I've just... I've just assigned all of my squads to attack this Etten. Here goes nothing. I don't have a good feeling about this, but here we go. There we go. Everybody's out. We're fighting. Everybody's attacking. We are hitting him, and the Etten is dead. We did it. Yes. The Baron Gonsort Grumpy stabbed the Etten in the body with his spear. He's right in there. Gathers all around us. This is truly horrifying. How fleeting life is. Be gone, fear. It looks like a whole bunch of dwarves were in on the fight, hacking and slashing at the, the Etten at all places, but it seems like the planter Utag Tikqualide got the final blow, hacking at the head, tearing apart the muscle. Good job. The dwarves are safe once again. Amazingly enough, I'm looking through the, the health report here and none of our dwarves were injured in that fighting. There's a stray lamb that has, that needs a diagnosis, <laughs> but none of the fighters were injured. We are getting stronger. And oblivious to the Etten attack, Kib Medtabal, a farmer, has created Gutudvatak Uzrakas, a copper scepter. She claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor, Lor Shintrade. Gutidvutak Uzrakas, utter figure, the growl of strangers. Worth 40,800, not bad. Ooh, it's decorated with pigtail and encircled with bands of bobcat leather and point cut citrines. On the image is an image of Parched Puzzled, the native platinum toy hammer and copper. A dragonfly man in cave spider silk. Another image of Parched Puzzled, the native platinum toy hammer in yellow zircon. An image of dwarves in blue peafowl leather. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of mine allied by the systemic ore of the systemic tool in the early spring of 250. On the item is an image of a hydra in citrine. Well, I don't know where that hydra came from. 
Well, this is basically all about the history of our fortress. A nice artifact to round out the end of the year. Now I kind of want the, the year to end before anything bad happens to, to sour the mood. While we have a little break here, I'm going to start summarizing the year's events. Uh, we created this nice area up here at the top of our tower for shooting down from, but it doesn't work at all. We created a pasture pen out here, um, going down. Uh, we expanded a little bit the meeting area, added more storage areas, of course. Um, we created a, a mayor's suite here. It's not that great, but it's it's across from the, the Baroness's suite. It'll do. Um, down here we've got the mines that we've dug out completely. Uh, we're still digging out in these tunnels over here. Over on this side, I messed up and accidentally dug out all these apartments instead of smoothing them. So I, I am trying to figure out what to do with that now. One level down, this is where our massive apartment complex is. This is where I'm going to put all of everybody, pretty much. And going down, uh, this is basically unchanged. I added a tunnel that goes all the way down here to the well area. Which, I mean, I say well, but it's it's still not an actual well. It's just a tunnel that goes down to the cavern water lake. Um, so there's So we can get to that from the inside now, in case we're ever locked inside. And of course, down here at the bottom, we have the... Uh, the mausoleum area, I'll call it, where we have tombs and uh, burial receptacles. And uh, that's it. By the way, I solved that uh, drink problem, drink shortage problem. I added an extra still and increased the work orders for making more booze. And the year is almost over, so I'll start wrapping this up. It's been a really eventful year. It's been a, a lot of year, uh, a lot of war this year, and uh, a lot of fighting. We persevered, though. We lost two dwarves, but we made it through to New Year's Day of the year 253. Year 252 is now in the books. And that'll be all for this episode. See you next time.